In today's hybrid workplace world, collaboration tools are more important than ever. So here with me today with more on that is Colin Jennings. He is the CTO of Collaboration at Cisco. Thanks so much for joining me today, Colin. Thank you, pleasure to be here. Okay, so let's talk about collaboration and what tools are being used to really take us from you know, the old way of working to the new way of working in this post-pandemic world where you have people working from anywhere. So we've got every meeting's got people in the same room. We've got people uh, remote where we're always joining and people are trying to work from all kinds of different places. So this brings us to a lot of tools to really help us improve the audio along the way and, and have a good audio experience, help us improve the video experience, and also tools to help us bring more complex data and things we're trying to share, 3D data, things that aren't flat. And those are the three big areas that I see a lot of improvements coming forward with. So when it comes to the 3D data part, tell me about Cisco's work in holograms. So WebEx Hologram is one of the latest things I've been working on a long time, Cisco's been working on it. It's really exciting that we're, we're coming out with it now. And the idea of WebEx Hologram is to improve the realism of being able to deal with things that aren't flat. I mean, if you've got a PowerPoint slide, it's great for a bunch of things, but it doesn't work for other things that are like an object. I'm trying to build something and show it to you and have you look at it from different points of view. So WebEx Hologram is about us capturing me as a hologram or whoever's presenting and any objects that they have or models they might be able to show and projecting them into your world where you can use an augmented reality headset and see this person as a, a, a real 3D person in front of you. And it's not your sort of old sort of stereo 3D where it's like, you know, you go to a 3D movie and you move your head and nothing changes. This, if you move your head here, you see around different sides of it. It's true 3D where you can get a better understanding of what it is. And this creates an experience that, that is more like actually being there. It's not exactly the same as being there, but it's closer to that. And it allows you to understand things and feel more connected with whoever you're talking to than, uh, than a system that doesn't provide that type of experience. So let's talk a little bit more about the exact hardware at play here for these applications. Sure, for our hologram applications, what we're using is um, an array of cameras that's capturing from all different views. And we're moving that information up to the cloud where we're using a lot of sort of modern GPUs to do the computing on that. And then we're moving that down to an actual headset where we're displaying it, where we're using like an augmented reality headset like Magic Leap's headsets. And so there's a lot of technology that had to all come together and move in advance. We need advances in the cameras and the way we could do the image processing on them. We needed advancements in, in GPUs. And a lot of the compute that those are providing makes this next generation of applications possible. And we need the headsets that are these incredibly powerful mobile computing wearable device to get to a small enough size and be able to deliver everything to, to deliver these holograms. Now, we've been tracking this technology for a very long time, and we look for all the pieces of the technology to hit a certain speed where a new class of application becomes possible or a new experience becomes possible. And then that's when we go and start building that and developing it, get it out to customers, test it, see what it can be used for. So speaking of customers, this technology is available today. What are some of the customers doing with this very high end technology that we're seeing now? So it, it's been fun. It's been, a, it's been a, a wide variety of use cases that people start to use this uh, WebEx hologram for. We've seen it used everything from sort of medical training where people are trying to teach doctors how to take an instrument and move it into you know, your rib cage in a certain way to do an operation. So a lot of 3D type training things. And we're also seeing it used a lot for design reviews and appraisal things. So for example, a customer of ours that uses for that uh, is McLaren and their F1 racing team. And they'll have cases where they needed to redesign a part in a track at a track because the temperatures were higher than they expected. So they needed more air into their brakes. And they're trying to do that on a very short time frame. And they're going between the people in the field saying, this is what we need, back to a factory uh, or their head office where they're trying to do the design and go back and forth very quickly. And they're trying to show each other 3D objects of what they need, what it would look like. They're trying to build something, say, will this fit? And the other team out on the field goes, yeah, that looks like that'll fit. And their view is that helps them speed up their whole speed of innovation, which is critical for them. They're, that's fundamentally what they're about is innovating fast to improve their racing times. So, you know, it's those types of fun engineering design review customers that also use it a lot. So that's one thing, and that's what we're seeing today. 
but moving down the line where it's just more your standard meetings, what's it, what's it going to take for this sort of uh, technology to not only become accessible to, to the masses, but also become the norm? So I think that there will we'll start with sort of point use cases like I was just talking about where, where you use it for a very specific thing. But then it will move to the type of view where every meeting has this capability and we just need the cameras to advance on that. And it's really, it's, it's odd things on the side that drive that. Mobile phones have driven the, the advancements in cameras down to be cheap and small and super high quality in an amazing way. So that technology allows us to put that into every meeting device by reducing the cost of that. And then it'll be a sort of mode where you're in a meeting and not every meeting you'll use 3D or a, a headset or, or anything, but there'll be times where you want to switch to that. And in the same way that you switch to sharing some slides for a minute and then go out of sharing slides, you'll go to sharing 3D for a bit to do some 3D tasks that you want to deal with and really think about. Um, so we'll see that become much more the norm as time goes on. So when it comes to workplace collaboration, software solutions, there, there's a lot of competition out there. So how is Cisco standing apart in that competition? So Cisco's always made one of the sort of leading products in that space. Um, and, and that's, we bring a lot of the advances into that. Um, right now, some things that I really like is our ability to deal with background noise and remove them, or our ability to take a bunch of people in a conference room and pick out just the right person that's talking or the group of people are talking and frame them in a good way that puts them up. Those are all super advances from where, where I see the rest of the, the marketplace. But the most important thing that we do isn't even around exactly how we exceed and stay ahead of our competitors, it's how we interoperate with our competitors and work with them. Because collaboration is valued by how many people you can talk to. I mean, the person who bought the first fax machine was very brave. There wasn't a single other person they could send a fax with. So there's this network effect. The more people you communicate with, the better. So we try very hard to work towards building bridges, make sure that we can interoperate with the various competitor systems because our largest customers, they have equipment from us, they have equipment from all of our competitors, and they need it all to work together. So, for example, one of the things that we're doing right now that we're excited about is we're working with Microsoft, which is in some ways one of our competitors, but it's also one of our partners, to bring out all of our video conferencing devices and work on how do we move those so that they work really well with Microsoft Teams. That doesn't mean we're not going to keep them working with the other things as well. But the value to our products is to work with everyone's, whatever conferencing system you're trying to use, make sure that we work well with it. So that means Teams and Slack, for instance. Teams, Slack, Zoom, uh, Google Meet, all of these are, are products that various customers use for, for needs in various ways, and they might have happened due to acquisitions and merging companies together. And the collaboration market is messy. There's lots of things you need to work with. And a large power of the sort of Cisco ecosystem is being able to interoperate with all of those. And that goes right back to the DNA of Cisco, if you think about it from the beginning, is we interoperate networking equipment. I mean, no one ever asks, will my Cisco networking equipment connect to a competitor's networking equipment? That's how the internet works. So yes, it all connects together. So we really like to drive that type of model of making sure that whatever the customer is trying to accomplish and whatever equipment and systems they have, we can give them the best experience possible out of that environment. Getting a little bit more narrow in uh, the competitive landscape would be on the holographic front, uh, something that you guys are working on. Google also has a competing product. So what is the key differentiator there on Cisco's end? So when we start talking about the holographic systems and more broadly the metaverse as a whole, like there's a whole range of things. We're at the wild west early days of people trying to figure out what's, uh, what's interesting there and, and, and what works. So you see a bunch of companies going down the view of we're going to make avatars that try and represent people and, and bring them forward into an environment. Now, we don't we don't think that's the most important thing. We think authentic representations of people, of knowing you, of being closer to you. Do you trust me? What am I saying makes sense? That those are the important things. And you need an authentic representation of people for that. So we've gone down the, the light field approach to give very authentic approaches to it. And some other companies have done that as well. Um, you know, Google's uh, Starlight Project, for example, delivers that. But they've taken the view of like trying to 
take a little box of the world, make a window of the world from one side to the other. We've played with that a bit too. That's an interesting point of view. But we think the point of view that we're excited about is bringing me right into your world and, and having somebody be closer to you by sitting in your environment in that type of space. Now, no one knows what's right or wrong of all of these right now. Everyone's experimenting with everything and seeing what it's like. It's exciting to watch, right? It's not like one of those areas where the competitors are exactly going against each other. Everybody's trying very different things and then seeing which ones resonate with users and really make for the right environment. So what would you say are some of maybe either an investment or an acquisition that Cisco has made to really help drive forward the capabilities that we see today in WebEx? What would be the biggest sort of contributor there? Sure, it's always hard to pick exactly what the biggest contributor of, uh, of these are, but one that I'm excited about that's a much easier question to answer in some ways is, like Babel Labs was an acquisition that we did. And what Babel Labs technology allowed us to do was really refine removing background noise from conversations. So whether somebody's typing on a keyboard or a dog barking or those types of things. And yes, we're seeing lots of companies come up with that type of technology. We're one of the first to really release it on a, on a large scale, and we see other people following that. But ours is just getting so much training data and we're moving it forward so fast. We think that the algorithms that came out of that acquisition are just way ahead of where anyone else is. We're really, you know, that's an exciting thing that makes a real difference to our users using the product. And what about customer service applications? Zoom, for example, is moving into that market. What is Cisco's plan for other markets and applications like that? So we've always been a large player in the call center type business in that area. That's a really important business for us going forward. And right now the whole call center industry is in a, a sort of transition that we've seen many other places of moving from on-premise systems to in the cloud type systems. Uh, and that has a lot of advantages. The advances in, in AI and uh, machine learning really change what's possible with customer services. So on that, we focused on both the traditional voice type channels, but also on other messaging and instant messaging and video and various types of other channels that people want to communicate to their call center with. And we've looked a lot at AI and machine learning to help route those requests the right way and answer calls the right way. And you'll see huge advances over the next few years in particularly what's happening in the ML space with, with chat and IM for those types of spaces. Now, when we look at the fundamental basics of that, we're just way ahead of where uh, any company like Zoom is at. They're still at the early stage of trying to develop the call center and bring those types of technologies together. And I'm sure they'll, they have a lot of expertise and we'll be able to do that. Um, but we're, we're really just, that's table stakes that we already have in our platform and we're building the next level of the ML and AI on top of it. Well, Cisco has a lot going on and thank you so much for breaking everything down for us today. Pleasure getting to talk to you, thank you. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching Investors Business Daily on YouTube. If you wanna watch more videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing.